Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super elated to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop video today. Today, we are going back to Korea. I can tell by the language written in the description here that this is Korean. And I'm really excited to look at it because this is my favorite place to go Lindy Hopping. I'm not sure if this is a Jack and Jill type competition or even a teacher demo, but I'm going to give you my opinion of who I thought was the best couple after this. Are we ready? Hey. I'm going to tell you right now, this going to be good. I know it. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love that move. Everybody is so good, technically. It's just ridiculous how technically proficient every one of these dancers are. Yes. <laughs> Everybody came out so smooth.
Oh. Yes. I got to tell you, like I always do, it's really hard to judge uh, dancers in Korea. There's just a le different level of work ethic when it comes to the technique. I love that. I absolutely love that people take this craft seriously enough to just master the craft. Now, obviously, when I'm judging dancers in this type of environment where they're all technically proficient, I have to change my rules a little bit. I don't look for the bare minimum, which is the control part of Lindy Hop. Obviously, that technical part that really is the objective part. That's the only real objective part. That's can you move with your partner? Are you guys looking like you have control of the technique? Does it, it doesn't look sloppy, which means does it, does it look like you all have control? And obviously most of these dancers had that. I'd say every one of them had that capacity to move with their partner totally down. And that was wonderful to see. It's refreshing to see that. So then I have to shift to a more critical analysis of the only subjective thing that's left, which is what did I like? Um, and also, how well did they match the music? That's timing and creativity. And so when I looked at that, there, there were so many different dancers uh, coming out with familiar things that I've seen before. So that even made it more difficult because many of the moves that I saw were a lot of moves that my friends uh, make up, which is cool to see. You know, I could see these dancers like imitating some of my friends moves better than them. <laughs> you could say that. I like that though. I like that. So, you know, I don't, I don't criticize people for uh, just borrowing everybody's moves all the time. But I will say if they can do the moves that look like someone else's and mix it up just a little bit, then of course you still get my respect on that because obviously all Lindy Hop is based on some of the original dancers' moves. Shorty George, Maddie Purnell, Frankie Manning, Norman Miller, and a lot of the second generation swing dancers. So, with that being said, I can't knock them too much for it, but I will say uh, the couple for me that did some moves that were familiar, but they also added a little bit of their personality, and they actually stood out to me more than any other couple was the, the couple with he had a hat on and she had a white shirt on. That's all I can say. See, he had like overalls, uh, no, overall suspenders, and he had a round hat on. And uh, they came out doing some nice stuff, technically. But what I liked was the tonality of it was much different than everybody else's. Um, there, there was a distinction between just not their moves, but how they were moving throughout their moves that made me want to look at them. But then once they got my attention, I noticed that they were doing uh, some moves that were familiar to me, that my friends made up, but they were doing it in swing time and in the macro musicality uh, framework. So on that fourth eight count where the music's about to change and go into something else, they nailed that. They nailed that. But what happened right after that that I really liked is they didn't just go back into dancing. It's like, here comes the move, everyone does the move, and then everybody just goes back to dancing, you know, and keeps moving. <laughs> they didn't just stay with that macro musicality. They ended up doing some like little turn, you know, really slow and slow motion that was just different. It was unexpected for me. And I like when people do things that are spontaneous and fresh and somewhat different. I respect that. So for me, they were my favorite couple. Uh, and then obviously I got to go to the dancer that I know that I like, and I believe it was Sue Chan Lee. I saw him come out with his partner. They broke away for a little bit. He did a little bit of like style stuff with his partner, but he stood out. I did not see what his partner was wearing. I just re remember seeing his moves and I thought, yeah, I know that dancer, but, uh, I like what he's doing. Not just, I know him. And I think that's hard for a lot of judges because you know people and it's very political, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, who won last time? Well, we can't have them win again. Ah, uh, who? what's popular right, right now in politics? Well, let's highlight that. Ah, uh, well, are, are there any dancers that, you know, look different? Yeah, let's highlight that. You know, and, and I, I don't really like that about the nature of 
uh, judging something that's subjective, but it's also somewhat objective. That part makes it a little cheesy and a little unnecessarily uh, disingenuous. Sorry about that. But his partner, uh, his partner had like a, oh yes, it was like this maroon dress. Yeah, and she had like orange red hair. I liked them. I liked them. They were my second favorite. They stood out. Um, but those are the main two. Those are the main two that I liked the most, um, where their personalities were distinct. I could tell it was a little different than everything else that I was seeing. Now, I'll give it to you. I don't know if all these people were teachers or not, but they all should be teaching. I would hire them in a moment if, if you know, I knew they were in America and I'm like, hey, could you come to my event and teach some people in my community? I would love that. I, ha I, would, I would have no qualms at all having some of these dancers come and teach for me. That's how good they were. That's what I like to see. Now, the part that is the real closer for, and, and the distinction that I would say that makes a person just from a fantastic to legendary is that inimitable portion of who that person is. It's the creativity, folks, that makes the difference. So at this level, I'm looking for different personalities, quirkiness, weird moves, but these dancers have the capacity to do that. And if, if more of them were actually willing to do that, I'm telling you guys, this is one of the most phenomenal things about swing dancing is that when people take it seriously, it can be, it can be world changing in terms of inspiration for future, for future dancers. And Korea has got it. They've got the technique. I'm just hoping, I'm just really hoping that there's more dancers that will come out of here that have the guts to say, yes, I'm going to come out with my ideas and just show the world in a way where everybody will just have to take their shoes off and throw them at their computers towards the dancers, right? So who did you think won this at Sweetie Swing? I liked this. It says this event's been going since 2000. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I I'm assuming that it will continue to go because uh, the audience was into it. Looks like people were having a good time. And I think that's really important if people have a good time. Because sometimes you have big events like this and people go and they don't have a good time. You know, people, the event's been there for 30 years, but it's still the same click. And when people go that are new, they're just like, oh, this is, oh, man, I had the worst experience. Nobody danced with me or whatever. But I, it seemed by the audience response that the people here enjoyed their time or they at least enjoyed the company of these uh, dancers. Not to say if they're not instructors or students. I don't know, but I do know some of them are teachers. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys thought in the comments section about which couple you thought uh, made your skin rise a little bit. I love it. I love it. It got me excited watching them and uh, I'd love to hear your opinion. If you guys are new to Lindy Hop, you've never done it before, I encourage you get in the game. Don't just sit and watch videos. It's not as hard as it look. I have about 30 courses you can check out below that will teach you some of my uh, original Lindy Hop moves. I am really into creating new ways to do Lindy Hop. Not just stuff that's choreographed that you and your partner have to know, but stuff that you can actually follow and lead on the social dance floor. And that's really the part that makes me excited about um, this art form. You know, I've been dancing for 30 years, and when I found Lindy Hop, this was just a whole nother world for me that made me fall in love with dance all over again after hitting a creative plateau. And so I encourage you, if you're a dancer getting into Lindy Hop, or if you don't know how to dance at all, check out those courses. It'll really inspire you. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Big shout out to all these dancers at Sweetie Swing. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, will check out those courses online, or I will see your comments in the next reaction video. Take care.